The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got another exciting week in the markets, man. you got markets roaring higher. How about the action, right? I mean, I put it lightly. But just from yesterday, man, you have the market trade down Sunday night from 3980 to below 3900. Folks, we had a 3800 handle yesterday at about 4 a.m. Eastern time. We're above 4000. 4,018. We just hit a high of 4,020. Not quite 420 for our man Elon. 4,020 in the S&Ps. You're up by 36 points. Fed meeting begins today in the middle of what you could call a banking crisis that's still unfolding. You jump over to First Republic. You want some volatility, man. First Republic. Now, you're going to hear the stories of First Republic is trading higher today, and they are, man, because percentages on small numbers, they can be very large percentages because you're dealing with small numbers. So you are up right now, $3 and what, 50 cents on a $12 stock. What is that, almost a 30% rise. Here's all I'll tell you, folks. All you're doing is you're trading back to where this equity was trading at at about 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Doesn't mean anything, but context is important. You're gonna hear all the headlines because I'm seeing this them this morning. You had First Republic trading dramatically lower. You're now back to where you were at about 1.30, well off of the lows of yesterday and well off of the lows of the close. But as we've seen, Right, Very difficult to stem the tide in terms of what is going on with First Republic, but we got markets in positive territory. And before we go through the market wrap, let's talk about some of the action driving the market wrap this morning. Federal Reserve faces tough decisions. Fed meets today, decision tomorrow. We'll put that one on a back burner for a moment because this is the one, folks. Yellen, uh, what is she talking at 10 o'clock? Is that it, right? I believe it is. Let's see if they say it in here. Pretty sure she's talking at 10 o'clock, but we already have some of the comments out there. We'll say on Tuesday that the U.S. government could repeat the drastic actions it took recently to protect bank depositors if small lenders are threatened. Always intriguing reading through this. Small lenders. Does that include companies like Roku that park half a billion dollars in one for-profit bank and then complain that their money's at risk? Yeah. Uh, not exactly small lenders. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Let me do that one again because this is talking about small lenders. All right. Not Roku, not a fair comparison. I'm going left and right here. But small lenders, they're talking about the intermediate banks, folks. The the, the smallish banks, the intermediate banks, the medium, the regional banks. Uh, as Yellen will say, Treasury Secretary Yellen is going to say, I believe these are remarks that she'll be talking about at 10 o'clock. Our intervention was necessary to protect the broader U.S. banking system, and similar actions could be warranted if smaller institutions suffer deposit runs that pose the risk of contagion. We know they pose the risk for contagion because we're living through it right now. So she is at a conference of the American Bankers Association. Ah, that's going to be quite a conference, a little, a little uh, shoulder bumping with the bankers. Good time to be a banker. That'll be an interesting conference, right? Uh, U.S. authorities, yeah, took the extraordinary step, of course, with Silicon Valley and Signature. And that transitions over to this headline. As the U.S. studies ways to ensure all bank deposits if the crisis grows, authorities don't see yet expanding the FDIC coverage as necessary. Still, they're studying the legal framework using emergency powers. And how do you let a bank fail and not cover their someone's deposits when you got a company like Roku, bring it back to them, man, with $500 million and they got all their money back, man. Doesn't seem fair if that's the case. Seems like they're already in a tough spot that they gave the implicit, okay, the implicit um, designation that, yeah, they're, they're going to they're gonna back them, man. Now, they have to call the bank systematic in order to be able to do that. I believe that's the, the regulation, right? But you can see how things change so quickly because the law that got passed in, what, 2017, 2018, which rolled back some of Dodd-Frank, specifically said banks under $250 billion were exempt under the premise that they were not systematically important. Well, that just went out the window the moment they were going to go BK, folks. Uh, First Republic is still in a tough spot. 
And here's the two sides of this. Number one, I don't understand how the runs on these banks stop unless they do guarantee it. Because, man, as I've been saying, who has over $250,000 in any bank right now, folks? Get it out of there. Like yesterday, there is no reason. Your risk-reward analysis, okay, doesn't compute. The reward for keeping over $250,000 in any bank right now, besides probably the you know, top four banks in America out there. And even, I guess, when you read through this, you know, the biggest 10, 12 banks out there that have been stress tested, et cetera, yeah, they're probably going to be okay. If they're not okay, the Fed's going to bail them out. But boy, why would you have your money anywhere else, man? It just doesn't make sense. The run's never going to stop. It's just not going to stop, man. You're seeing it. You're seeing it playing out with Credit Suisse. You're seeing Morgan Stanley, uh, JP Morgan, and some of the other banks put $30 billion into First Republic, and the market doesn't even blink, man. Doesn't even blink. We're living in especially interesting times, folks, to put it lightly. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Because what are the longer-term implications for something like that, right? Obviously, it's going to... I mean, in theory, it should hurt the good banks, too, right? It's like, you know, that's part of the difference here. You put your money with a bank that you believe in, and that's gone if this comes in. The other part of that is if the government's backstopping everything, you better believe we have some regulations, man, because we see how this goes, right? We see how it goes left and right in terms of these banks facing a crisis. Now, they have a liquidity crisis. They don't have a capital crisis, okay? They hold these to maturity. In terms of the government bonds, they'll get them back. But boy, you start getting into the mortgage deal, right? Let's see. I got this one pulled up. We got a lot of good stuff to go through this hour, man. It's only 912. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hicks coming up after the break. Always interesting, right? That We talk to Kevin every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And man, it seems like the last couple of weeks from Thursday to Tuesday, the whole world changes almost instantly. Okay. Forgive me as I jump around here. I guess yelling. I had a couple others. We'll get through them all. Here we go. I wanted to get to the mortgage-backed securities, okay? Anxiety strikes the $8 trillion, trillion mortgage-backed debt market after the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. Investors fear other banks will sell mortgage-backed securities, pushing down the prices. There's stuff coming out of the woodwork, folks, that's like everywhere right now. And it's especially interesting to try and figure out whether we know that things are bad, right? The only bullish scenario I'm seeing is that the Fed's just going to throw money at this and the Treasury until they don't need to. And that's it, to the point of actually FDIC insurance carrying up to infinity dollars, which is pretty remarkable, man. Now, you check out agency mortgage debt, right? We're talking about, okay, to back this up a bit. Mortgage-backed securities, the risk premium on mortgage-backed securities, talking about the widely followed Bloomberg Index of agency, MBS, hit its highest level since October when climbing interest rates turned global markets topsy-turvy. The move reflected feels that other regional banks might have to sell their holdings. Yeah, you might have to. This is why I think the Fed is really just nonstop right now, flooding the money with mar mar um, flooding the market with money and guarantees. And you want to talk about a problem, man? Agency mortgage debt in billions. Silicon Valley Bank held to maturity, sixty-nine billion. That's the reason why Charles Schwab's having trouble, man. One hundred and fifty-nine billion. U.S. Bank Corp. Seventy-six billion. We're coming back with our man Kevin Hanks, folks. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 35 points right now. All the markets in the green. Dow up about 315. NASDAQ 100 up by 88. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with our man Kevin Hanks. Fast market. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the whole team, they break it down. You don't get a faster market than this man. Let's just jump right into it. Kevin Hanks, I haven't talked to you since Thursday, man. A few things have happened in this market. Uh, where do you want to kick things off as a trader? Boy, when we got a lot on the table this week. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, well, the, the most important thing going on right now is day one of the Fed meeting. And as we're walking on the air, there's a the, the CME Fed Watch tool has an 84.9% chance that they're going to raise by 25 basis points. And then... I think Jerome Powell will, you know, I think, Tommy, tomorrow's press conference will turn out to be a walk and chew gum press conference, which means Jerome Powell will say, we can work and we can work on securing the banking industry and those two things can act independently. So we're raising rates and we're helping banks at the same time and off we go. You know, their mandate is still to fight inflation. So I think it'll be a fun you know, 28 hours or so, Tommy, until we get it. But uh, I think so far, uncertainty about regional banks, uncertainty about banking in general is getting less and less uncertain as time goes on. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, it, it's pretty surprising. I think the last time we talked, right, was at the ECB and they go up 50 basis points. So we we're talking about maybe, you know, that's going to indicate at least to some degree, maybe what the ECB was thinking, what Chairman Powell may be thinking as their meeting comes up this week. Uh, and confidence. It's almost a confidence crisis right now, Kevin, in terms of nobody having the confidence, which has created those runs on some of those banks that are most vulnerable. And we'll see if the chairman can restore some of the confidence. What do you think about um, Yellen out there today? The comments out there that they're going to be there, not too surprising. Um, the conversation going on about potentially guaranteeing all deposits out there. What do you think of that angle as we come into the Fed meeting? Of course, both of those kind of intertwined, to put it lightly. What, well, you have to realize something, Tommy that Janet Yellen doesn't work for the Fed. She works for the administration. So she's going to say things that I, I'm not even sure she has the, the they, they have the ability to do that. Sure. But there's an explicit uh, rule on banking deposits, and then there's an implicit rule on banking deposits. And even though the guarantee, the explicit rule is 250000 
you know, in 500 or so bank failures, no deposit has ever been uninsured. So there's something they say and something that they do. And, and so basically, th- this is one of those, well, it's not a rule, but your, 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 ba- your bank deposits are probably insured. But yeah. they don't want that to be in writing or anything like that. So that's what I think. I think there's, she's working for the administration. She's reassuring people. But I don't think she has the authority to say all bank deposits are insured. Yeah, I'd, I'd, it's a pretty monumental change if they make it, man, especially, right? We're looking at this market where it seems like the losses, if you can hold to maturity and all this stuff going on, at least from what we know right now, right, that the taxpayers wouldn't be able to. But we've seen banking crises, man. You start guaranteeing all depositors. Um you talk about more hazard. You talk about, man, mortgage-backed securities. Yeah. You talk about 2008. It's quite a, a, a can of worms that you could be opening, man. Um, and just like you said, it explicit versus implicit. I'm trying to understand myself, Kevin, how this run stops to a degree because I don't think I'm willing to take that risk, even though you put it exactly right. And I don't know how you'd ever let a depositor go BK after you bail out Silicon Valley Bank, after you give you know Roku $500 million back that they stuffed in one bank, um, how you'd let anybody lose their money when you have a company like Roku and many others, folks, okay? I just, I agree with you. But boy, how, why would you take that risk, right? It's like the risk reward scenario from a trader, Kevin, of putting that money in a bank. There's not a ton of reward versus putting it in another bank potentially or splitting those funds. And that's where I'm kind of struggling to, to square all that. Um, so we come into the Fed decision tomorrow. I like your take on things. It seems like if, if Chairman Powell paused, the confidence deal would be a big issue. We hit that tomorrow. Let's say, Kevin, let's just say that he does go 25, which some are expecting right now. Where do you see him going towards the next six weeks? We've had the two-year pullback so dramatically. I was listening to Bloomberg this morning. It's so interesting, actually. The two-year is back where it was on their on their February meeting, which is remarkable what we've done since then over a period of six weeks. If they do that, and maybe let's say, and we're making assumptions here, folks, okay, but where do you see the market, Kevin, as we go six weeks forward, if this really is maybe the area that, you know, they say, hey, guess what? We're restrictive, man. We're still going up 25. We're going to do both. But what if this is that that kind of turning point that potentially we get a pause six weeks out and, and maybe we get one more? Um, what do you think of equities? What do you think of yields if that kind of is that turning point that we're currently in? Well, here's the great Here's the great thing about the March meeting. The March meeting is one of the four times a year where you're going to get dot plots from all the members. And so you're going to get an overall, even though that's just a snapshot of how they're feeling right now, and that could certainly change based on the data, You, I mean, that could be something that gives people either a good feeling or a bad feeling about, about <laughs> things going forward. So, Tommy, I think there's a lot. There'll be a lot to digest, but the number one thing you want to consume and digest is on Wednesday, Jerome Powell's press conference. Because, you know, let's face it, during this entire banking crisis, he hasn't spoken because of yeah. the blackout period, right, from the Fed. Wild. So that's why we've heard so much from Janet Yellen and members of the administration, but we haven't heard from anyone from the Fed. Once that quiet period's over, I expect a lot of chatter <laughs> about banking, about rates, and I personally think... They'll come out and say, we can do inflation and we can we, and we can secure the banks. And those two can act independently, even though they're related. Those two can act independently. I think that's the theme we'll get. I'm just I'm just guessing. But, uh, you know, the the speculation and the markets. Here's what I think. If, if you want to know what I think about the markets, Tommy, they're going to be volatile. They're going to be whippy and just like they have been. So news is is going to be key here. Watch the news cycle, and I think this is going to be an interesting couple days and weeks here. Whew. And, folks, he puts it exactly right, Kevin. I mean, these charts on the S&Ps, it almost moves every single day. They don't look as large as they are on the Thinkorswim platform, man, because you've got 100-point moves left and right. And this is not how it always is, folks. You know, So take advantage of it if you can, because this volatility might seem normal now, but as we all know, um, it is not normal, man, and the moves are just amazing in terms of, I mean, we're, we're 120 points off of where we were four in the morning yesterday, Kevin, after going down 80 points. I know you know it, but, man, those are some staggering numbers. Yep. With that in mind, Kevin, the program at 12, I know we got a few things you guys may be touching on to begin the program in terms of what's on the table, but what are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin? Well, I'm, the great news is we have Nike to talk about today, so we'll 
Yeah. We're, we're working out a third. We're not going to Broke up a little bit there, Kevin, but I appreciate it, man. We got some wild days. Always interesting when I talk to you on Tuesday, and especially so, man, from that Thursday. Who knows where the market's going to be tomorrow, Fed Day. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man. I appreciate the education. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, brother. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, fast market. Does the market get any faster than it is right now, man? Uh, we jump over to the VIX, volatility index on that think or swim platform. Ooh, talk about sucking out some volatility, man, from 29 to 22 over the last couple days. Well, that's what happens when the market rolls up 120 points. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got markets open and we catch a bid, man. Check it out. S&P's now up 42 points. NASDAQ 100 up about 100 points. That's 8 tenths percent. Dow up 1.1%. 32,821. You got the Russell up 1.9%. The Russell approaching 90 points above where it was at yesterday, folks. Um, and boy, what, what's that percentage, my 90 divided by 1,700. You're talking about a 5.3% move in the Russell from the overnight lows of just 
Sunday evening going into Monday morning. You talk about some action, man. To put it lightly, we jump over to the crude contract. Crude catching a little bit of a bid. 68.88 from 64.36 yesterday. Gold contract pulling back a bit. 2014. How about Bitcoin? Right? Bitcoin. 28,000. 235. You back it up to 10 days ago, folks. And you're talking about a 19,000 handle up to 28,000. Pretty remarkable. Uh, gold pulling back. Check out that chart from 1800 and change to 2000 and change. Silver going from 1994 to 2285. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. And just like that, erase all of last week, right? The 10 year, 114.11. Overnight, we were at 115.11. Sunday night, we're at 116.24. Uh, absolutely remarkable everywhere in this market. You get the 10-year off 24 basis points, uh, 24 ticks at 114.10. You have the 30-year off a full point and one tick at 130.13. And we jump over to that VIX I mentioned, pulling back hard, man. 22.56 as this market rocks higher. 4,025. Absolutely remarkable. You almost have to recalibrate a lot of the charts you're looking at when you get this type of expansion. Now, here's what we'll pull up, folks. All right, let's go back. Let's see. What are we going to do here? Does that, that bring us all the way back? Well, that brings us back to some degree, okay? So to bring you into where this was, uh, Chairman Powell was here when he spoke in front of Congress, okay? And he told them higher for longer was the deal. So even if you take the spike high you got from Monday, the spike high Tuesday, I mean, absolutely remarkable that you almost got it all back from where he was on Tuesday, let alone we're now above where it was, was at at the end of the day Tuesday. What I don't understand, and I'm trying to understand, and I get the fact that the Fed's throwing helicopter money everywhere, and that matters, folks. Don't think it doesn't, right? But inflation is still here, okay? And basically, Chairman Powell signaled they were going 50 at that March 7th meeting. He scaled it back potentially a little bit on Wednesday, saying maybe that wasn't exactly what he was talking about, and I'm paraphrasing from basically market sentiment, okay? But if they don't go up, they're only not going up because the tightness in the economy is going to be there that's going to replicate a 50 basis point hike anyway, right? And the contagion is not over, man. If it was over, we wouldn't be dealing with these headlines left and right. And Janet Yellen wouldn't be coming out basically saying that they're going to guarantee everybody. Now, Kevin put it well, okay? There is an implicit guarantee, folks. And they're not going to deal with just cherry picking one bank where all the depositors lose their money, no matter how big or small it is right now, because that alone will just send everybody to the banks, okay? So they're not going to let that happen. But it is interesting that they would make it actually explicit. And as Kevin said, I don't know if you have that power because right now that might not seem like the end of the world when you're talking about banks like Silicon Valley Bank, right? That in this one in particular, okay, is not the end of the world when I talk about my perception of a government backstop because, yeah, you can, you know, the government could just hold that money until maturity, okay? So it's not a capital crisis on those specific debt instruments, which are of the highest credit quality, U.S. backed. Okay, yeah, we could we could tangent off into whether those are as reliable as we all think. Going out ten plus years, considering we can't go out ten plus months right now with the government saying that they'll pay their bills that we've already spent. That's another story all completely. But so you could backstop that one. But as I mentioned to Kevin, you can't backstop everything unless you really ratchet up the regulations because it's going to create a moral hazard. And so you have to have tougher regulations if you create that moral hazard. And you have to have them because the whole system could collapse and you could have a backstop, man, that could be trillions. There's no reason why you couldn't. Silicon Valley Bank was, what, $200 billion? What was signature? $100 billion. First Republic is, what, 250 270 Those three banks alone, you're talking about depositors of over half a trillion dollars. Just three banks that have been out of whack. Now, let's jump around to some of those banks this morning. First Republic, up 25%. As I started off the program, though, folks, be careful. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. You're only back to basically yesterday afternoon. Meanwhile, this thing was trading at $40 last week when the market found out they were getting $30 billion from J.P. Morgan. Well, guess what? Uh, Jamie Dimon, he's trying to do it again because that did nothing. $30 billion is nothing when they're getting the outflows that they're getting. Yeah, and the market woke up to that pretty quickly. Now, bringing it back to the mortgage-backed securities, okay? This one gets a little dicier. I'm not sure how it's going to play out, man. For Schwab, $159 billion. I mean, 
you know, you you talk about the government backstop and everything, folks. Well, how about if that's going to be the case, the banks mark to market their their assets. I mean, how do you have? I mean, folks, if you've taken accounting, okay, you got assets and you got liabilities, and I'm talking about accounting 101, man, assets and liabilities, okay. Well, how is it that you just never have to mark to market some of your assets to the tune of tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars, and we don't figure out that eventually that could go bad? It just seems like an obvious scenario, and you look at some of these numbers, man, it is pretty startling in terms of how high the percentages of these numbers have risen. Now, agency mortgage-backed securities, okay, this is an article from the journal this morning, and it's talking about, like all long-term bonds, okay, mortgage-backed securities are vulnerable to rising interest rates, which pushed their prices down last year and saddled the banks, such as Silicon Valley Bank, with unrealized losses. So now that the FDIC has taken over Silicon Valley Bank, okay, they talk about investors expect the bonds to be sold off in coming months adding supply to the weakened market and pushing prices low, oh, lower. So this is an $8 trillion bond market, okay, considered almost as safe as U.S. government bonds. And meanwhile, you have the FDIC taking over Silicon Valley, right? They're going to sell off their bonds. That's going to hurt the market already. And you already have the others that are in there. And you look at some of the numbers. I mean, Silicon Signature Bank folks only had $4.5 in there, right? Some of the numbers that are really a mess. First Republic only has held to maturity of 6.4. There was Silicon. They were at $69 billion. That was a big problem, okay? U.S. Bank Corp, 36. And Charles Schwab, $159 billion, man. I, they, they're going to be in some trouble. Um, yeah, Charles Schwab and Truist. Is Truist in here? There's Truist at $47.8 billion of held to maturity. Now, they're not all mortgage-backed, I think, right? Yeah. No, this is the mortgage debt. This is just mortgage debt. Agency mortgage debt. Wow. Yeah. Uh, some of the largest holders, Schwab and Truist, of agency mortgage-backed securities among mid-sized U.S. financial institutions. Uh, Schwab, $237 billion of securities. The companies say they have ample capital. Well, don't matter what the companies say right now. I think you know that one, right? Any pairing of such large portfolios would hurt prices of the low coupon bonds most banks hold, but measures taken by U.S. regulators would prevent a fire sale. The Fed's lending facility and other initiatives would prevent banks from doing any forced sales. I mean, that's what they're trying to prevent, man. But boy, you talk about contagion, reverberations. That is quite a chart. Where was this chart two weeks ago, right? Where was that two weeks ago? We've got a lot to talk about still, folks. Don't go away. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up about 41 points right now, trading at 4,024. All the markets catching a bid. Let's jump over to the VIX right now. 2247. We check out some of the currencies. Dollar index right now, backing off 10308 on the dollar index. We check out the euro. Euro US dollar right now, climbing 10777. There you go. Let's check out the dollar yen. Dollar yen right now, backing off to about 13223. Back to the S&Ps real quick. So you take a look at where this thing was February 14th. We were pushing 4,200. You make it to a high of 4,186. You trade down to a low March 13th of 3,933. Now, here's what's interesting, folks, okay? Let's say uh, basically the market completed an A to B, C to D formation to the downside when you traded from 4,186 down to a price point of 3,839. Now, your A point would be about 4,186. One sec, I pulled this up during the break. 4,186, your B point... 39.25. You're talking about an A to B leg of about 259 points. Now, I say about. That's exactly 259 points, folks. But sometimes when I'm taking these, okay, when you get these large tails and you have an area that might better represent where it's sold off from, sometimes I'll take that. It's an art, not a science, right? Is the A point really begin at 4186.50? Um, does it begin at... 42.8 back here, or does it begin somewhere around about 41.50, right? Where you chopped around for a while. Point being, you got about an A to B leg of about 250 points, okay? Now, we'll do this a couple ways, because check this out. Let's say that is your A to B leg. Okay, you go down to a Fibonacci. What do we do? We got back to about a 6.18 in terms of you trade down your A point on February 14th, your B point on March 2nd. Within the span of a couple trading days, you give back a 618, but then what happens? What happens, folks, is you do about a 250-point leg again. You trade from a price point of 4,080 in the S&Ps down to 40, uh, excuse me, 3849. What's that? About 240 S&P points that you trade. You got some tails there. And then we've bounced. Now, where could this market trade to? Yeah, anyone's guess, as we know, okay? But let's say we just look at the real trend that we've gotten recently in terms of the entire completion of the A to B, C to D low. You go from 41.86 down to the lows of March 13th of about 38.40. Your 618 brings you right back to basically the highs of March 6th, right? 4,055. Maybe that's where you face some heat, man, because uh, you're kind of in a little bit of no man's land. Right now, you got above the highs we had on March 17th. That high was 4,010. We're trading at 4,025. Now, if you're looking for an A to B to the upside, okay, now, again, remember this kind of area. We're talking about 4,050, potentially 4,055. Maybe we face a little bit of heat. You got Yellen coming up in 15 minutes. Most of the heat of what she said is probably out there in terms of the sentiment, what she's talking about, that they will be there, implicit versus explicit, as our man Kevin Hinks stated. So we're talking about 4,055 potentially, okay, where we are. But if you just look and we go back to from where we were on March 10th, okay, where are we to get it? Yeah, so you're looking at a price point of about what, 4,038.50, right? You trade up from 3850 to about 4,000, so it's 150 points up. 
That's 100 points back down. So if your A point is about 38.50, okay, right here, your B point would be about 4,000. Your C point would be 3,900. Now, to put that in context as well, in terms of what type of a pullback we got, what did we get, folks? 618s are everywhere in this market. I'm telling you, I just keep seeing them everywhere, man. So you trade from a low of 38.39. We get up to a high March 17th of about 4,010. You trade back to the 618. And if you trade, that's 150 points basically from about 38.50 up to the price point of 4,000. If that's your A to B leg, you trade down a 618. If you get a C to D leg that matches the A to B leg, that brings you from about 39.05 at 150 points to 39.05, folks. And guess where it brings you? Exactly where we were just talking about, 4,055. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, I'm not even sure you'd get, I don't know how you get 30 points higher. But guess what, man? The helicopter money's coming, and we've seen the volatility, man, left and right. And I'm not so sure it's done in this market, and I'm not so sure the market deserves to be up 130 points right now when you have a Fed meeting tomorrow where the chairman is probably going to hike in the face of a banking crisis, and it's going to become more and more difficult. The one question that I'm going to ask our man Kevin Hanks tomorrow, okay, because I was thinking about it, and... I agree with a lot of what Kevin says. I mean, you can't beat experience, folks, and that's why I love talking to him three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9.15. He said, you know, chairman's going to come out and he's going to be confident. He said, we can do both. It's almost like what he has to do, right? What else is he going to say? Uh, I'm too afraid of the financial crisis to really combat inflation right now. I'm too afraid of inflation to really care about the financial crisis right now. No, you got to do both because that's what his job is. The better question is, can he do both, right? Can he tame inflation while he worries about the health of the banks? Can he make sure the banks are strong at the same time that he is still worried about inflation? I don't know if he can do that, and we're going to find out. Uh, but I thought that was interesting when you really lay out the runs we've had, right? So you have an A to B leg, C to D leg that brings us to the lows. Since that time, we've had a 150-point rise up. You bring it back to the 618, 150 points will bring us basically back to the highs that we had from about March 6th. And folks, that's 200 points down and 200 points up in the spirit period of about 200, uh, two weeks heading into a Fed decision that is one of the more uncertain that I've ever experienced, to put it lightly. It's going to be an interesting one, folks. Uh, and we talk about those mortgage-backed securities, right? You see charts like this, folks, and somebody tells you it's over. Don't worry. And we ever start guaranteeing all deposits, I, as a tax holder, okay, and this is, listen, it, it, this is not the same deal, Silicon Valley Bank, as like some 2008 bailout. Okay, it's not. But if we're going to be backstopping things, you better believe that the accounting rules that allow these banks just to hold assets that aren't worth what they say they are i mean it's just a recipe for disaster as we know folks i mean who couldn't figure out that holding debt anyway at 1.63 percent right we know how it goes man okay let's jump around what else we got going on what do we got we got some individual equity news yeah we got amazon so they're laying off another nine thousand workers okay i mean folks nine thousand workers for amazon i'll get my dad to talk about how many um employees they have they like doubled or tripled their employee base over the last three or five years during the pandemic, okay? So 9,000 workers, 18,000 workers. Does anybody in the den know how many workers they have right now? I think it's a million plus, right? You got Jazzy in there. He's had a tough start to his position as CEO. But well, boy, it's a tough time that uh, Bezos got out of Dodge right at the right time, man. And I'm sure he's not happy with how his wealth has gone over that time but i imagine he's okay with not being the ceo um, with some of those decisions it's a double-edged sword right of course he he wants to protect the company he built but man he got out right when things were going to get a little dicey but nine thousand jobs is nothing for that um adding to the eighteen thousand that were laid off in january yeah yeah this is an interesting article uh talking about virgin orbit so one of the things here seemed to have everything going but yeah, they're in big trouble. Be careful of this one, folks. Uh, they spun that off from Virgin Galactic. 
and you talk about a chart, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about space from 11 bucks to 48 cents. And uh, be careful of the other one too, Virgin Galactic, as they're now trading at just $4. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. S&P's up by 40. No problem, Shazam. We got a lot going on in this market, man. It's tough to keep track of. Yeah, Amazon employees. My dad in there, about 1.5 million. 1.5 million, okay? So when you talk about 9,000 folks, to put it in context, that would be like a company with 150,000 saying they're laying off 900 workers, or that'd be like a company with 15,000 workers saying they're laying off 90 workers, right? Putting things in context. 15,000 laying off 90 workers. Same thing as 1.5 million laying off 9,000, and they've only laid off 18,000 before that. Now, we'll wrap it up, man. You talk about some losses, right? All of these uh, AT1 bonds, as my dad was talking about last night, they call them grenade bombs, uh, grenade bonds. Bombs, bombs, yeah, they might as well call them grenade bombs, man, the way they went off. Uh, so all the talk about the AT1 bonds getting wiped out, well, equity holders held some of that, okay? in terms of equity, didn't get wiped out. These bonds did. They were created in the 2008 crisis, okay? The riskiest, the riskiest in the bank's debt stack. All right, here's all I'm gonna talk about. Now, this talks about that PIMCO had $807 million of them, 
Okay, and who else? Uh, what was it? Credit uh, Invesco is the other biggest holder of what they have in here. But here's the kicker, folks, okay? Don't feel so bad for the banks because they were getting, they got the interest rate in here. Oh, come on. 7.9% or something I saw in here was the percentage they were getting. All right, I'll find it. But it was, listen, any time you get over the guaranteed interest rate, Period. You have risk. So all this talk about like the risk, right? There was added risk to those bonds and they were getting the yield for the added risk to those bonds. Uh, pretty remarkable, man, to say the least. Folks, it's a fast market out there. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up next. Uh, it's a wild one, folks, folks. And we got Fed Day tomorrow and we keep marching on. S&P's holding up pretty well, man. Pretty, pretty Pretty calm, 26 minutes of trading, right, to kick things off. In terms of you open higher, you trade up to 4,027. We're sitting within a few points of that open, folks. I'm not sure that's how the day is going to go, though. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man, Basil Chapman, with the Tiger Technician's Hour. He's coming up next. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.